Good afternoon. My name is Sham Gosain. I'm part of a group with Susan and a couple other people that we are a non-denominational group. And today we want to talk about the kingdom gospel. And I want to present this to you today because we have coming into a time when the gospel, the kingdom of the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, any way you want to put it, is the most vital things in our life. So I want to introduce this message to you today in this format. When you ask anyone, what is the gospel? The first answer you get, the gospel is the good news. Yes, that's true, but the good news of what? And I want to, I want to introduce this, what good news to you. The Bible does not contain isolated sayings. Therefore, each verse needs to be understood in the context of the chapter in which it appears, and each chapter in light of the book in which it appears, and in its wider context, we must consider the whole Bible as well. For example, what does it mean that Jesus is the Christ, the Passover lamb, the son of Abraham, the son of David, the true vine, the good shepherd? The answers are all found in the Old Testament. The Bible must be read and understood as one book with one ultimate author, who is God, and one ultimate subject, God's plan of salvation through his son, Yahusha, or Jesus. So the Bible is all about God's plan of salvation, his promise to restore his kingdom, and the fulfillment of that promise through his son, Yahusha, the one we call Jesus Christ. So today, I want to present this message to you about the gospel of the kingdom. When our master, Yahusha, began his ministry, the first book that actually was written of the New Testament was the book of Mark. But there was a need for him to come. What? brought our master to this earth. Why, why did Yahushua the Messiah have to come to the earth? Romans 3 verses 10 to 11 explain that to us. And it says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand. There is no one that seeketh after God. And in verse 23 of this same chapter, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of Yahuwah. So there is, right there in that word fall short means that we are not reaching his standards. We are not making it to where we were at one point because we have, something has happened to mankind and we are not reaching God. And in this same book, in the, in, in the sixth chapter, it says, for the wages of sin is death. We see here in verse 23, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So now we see in this chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, but eternal life through his son, Yahusha. And that's the key to the, the, the gospel of the kingdom, to understand that you, the kingdom gospel is through his son, Yahusha. So when he came into the world, he came to restore what was lost, and that was Yahuwah's children, as we were lost. We were estranged from our father due to sin. So because sin separated us from our father and we were doomed to death, not just physical death, but spiritual death, our father made a plan to restore us. And we call this the plan of salvation. And because of this plan of salvation, he sent forth his son, as Paul says in Galatians 4.4, 4, when the time had fully come, he sent forth his son, born under the law, to deliver those of us who, according to this law, says the wages of sin is death. So he was born under this law to redeem us from this. So he began his ministry. And as he began his ministry, I would like to turn to Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 15. And in that, the scripture says now that after John was put in prison, came Yahusha 
into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That's what he began to preach, saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of Yahuwah is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So this is the message that he brought from the Father, that the kingdom of God is now at hand. Repent and receive this good news and you will be restored back to the Gan Eden state that we had once with our father. This is the message of the gospel. And the, the master himself, or when I use the word master, I am using it in substitution for the word Lord, because Lord is not the proper word, so I'm using the word master. So when he came, he began preaching this message, repent for the kingdom of Yahuwah is at hand. When we look at to see how he began the ministry before he said these words, we could go to the book of Luke and we will see in the book of Luke, it tells that as he was beginning his ministry, he walked into the synagogue as his custom was on the Shabbat. And this is something I would like to stress. As his custom was means that every Shabbat he was going to the synagogue. So our master, our redeemer, our savior kept the Shabbat and he went into the synagogue on the day of the Shabbat. And this day, the, the scroll of the book of Isaiah was handed to him. And he opened to the section where this is written. The spirit of Yahuwah is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. And he began his ministry right immediately as we were in John. We could, I mean, in Mark, where he said he began his ministry there and began to preach. If we would drop down in Mark, um, this is the other verses that he will talk about his ministry. What he began to do immediately as he began to preach, this is what happens. In verse 21 of Mark, it says, And he went into Capernaum straight away on the Shabbat, and he entered the synagogue. Just as we saw in Luke, that's where he went, into the synagogue. And he began to preach. And in verse 23, and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? We know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him and said to him, Hold your peace. So, why I have brought this one up is to confirm what you just are looking at here in Luke 4 18 to 19. He came to do these things, to heal the broken heart, to set deliverance the captives. This man was held captive by a demon, and the master came to set him free. So this was the initial, um, this was the, the, the starting point of his ministry. He began expelling demons, and he began healing people, and he began doing everything you see there in Luke 4, 18 to 19 to recovery of sight to the blind. This was one miracle that I think he performed more than, more than any other, making blind to see. He was preaching the gospel to the poor. And I want to explain and expound a little bit on that. When people were poor, when people were sick, back in those days, in that second temple period, it was generally understood by the out, other people that there's that person, the reason they are sick is because they are a sinner. The reason they are poor is because they are a sinner. They've done something wrong. That's why they are poor and that's why they are sick. Or their parents have done something like that. That's why they are poor and they are sick. But the, but the scripture does not bear that out. The scripture tells us that people are sick because the enemy inflict sickness on people. So one day, one day our Mashiach was talking and he was into the temple. And this is John 9 verses 1 to 2 I want to, I want to bring up. 
and as he was walking, there was a man that was born blind. And his disciples asked him, Master, this is what they said to him. This man who was born blind, his disciples asked him, Master, saying, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, this is the perception of everyone of that era. They thought that for something bad that has happened to someone, it was as a result of sin because they have been punished by God. It's either them or their parents has done something and God is now punishing them. But the master is saying, no, that's not true. With not everything that you see, you could attribute to sin. Neither this man nor his parents sin. But what you are seeing here today is for the glory of Yahuwah because he knew what he was going to do. He was going to restore the sight of this man that was born blind. And I don't want to go into the real details of all this because I have so much more I want to share and we don't have much time. But one of the key scriptures about his ministry is found in 1 John 3, 8. And it says this, the reason the Son of Man came into the world is to destroy the works of the devil. I am paraphrasing for the whole thing says, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of, Man, of God came, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So from there, we can go back to that scripture in John and see the devil is the author of the sin. He is the one that, that brings, brought sin into the world and causes man to disobey God and do things in sin. So when John says the reason he came was to destroy the works of the devil, this means to destroy sin. And how can our master destroy sin? And this is one of the favorite scriptures of all preachers of everywhere you go. The father has the antidote for this poison. And that's found in John 3, 16 and 17. Scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That was his plan of salvation. The father knew that mankind had so been poisoned and so been estranged from him that man in and of himself was incapable of redeeming or coming back. So in his love, for us in his as we read in those verses for he so loved us he didn't risk our future to an angel or to some other being he came himself this is what the gospel of john tells us that in the beginning was the word the word was god and the word was the god and that word became flesh and dwelt among us so the father himself took upon himself flesh came in the person that we know as the son, and we call him Yahusha. And this is the solution to the sin problem in the world. This is the gospel which we need to share, that there is good news. God is not angry with you. He loves you, and he has sent his son to bring you back to his kingdom, bring you back to the being his people in his place, under his rule, and in his blessings. Brothers and sisters, there's so much we can talk about the gospel. But I know we have a short time today, and we are not here to spend like an hour teaching. This could go for two or three hours. But I just wanted to, to share what I have shared so far, and I just want to add a few more things. As we, as we noticed that the, our master went through this ministry of healing and casting out demons and raising the dead and many many scriptures there are 39 recorded miracles in the four gospels but we learn from yokanan or john that if he would have recorded everything our master did and said not even all the books in the world will be able to contain so they have given us just the best skeleton of the things he had done 
But remember what he said in First John. He came to destroy the works of the devil. So there are many things he had to do to destroy the works of the devil. And I'd just like to point out a few things. When Adam disobeyed, that was a sin of disobedience. But when the fallen angels came down in, G in Genesis 6, mankind became depraved. We, the scripture says that all his intention of his heart and mind was evil continually. So we had, we had disobedience and we had depravity. And then in um, Genesis 11, we had absolute rebellion. God said, do this. They said, no, we are going to do this. So God these three things are what the, 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 the Messiah came to fix. He came to fix what Adam did, to fix what the fallen angels did, and to fix what Nimrod did at the rebellion. So in restoring mankind, there was a process he had to go through to restore us. And these are part and parcel of the gospel of the kingdom. When that good news began to be preached by him himself, he started systematically destroying the works of the devil. And the way he began to do that is by casting out demons, healing the sick, making the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, the lame to walk. Everything that brought mankind into deformity, the master was restoring. And this was part, this is the whole plan of salvation, redemption and restoration of the children of Yahuwah. And we, as his children, this is where we should be shouting, Hallelujah, thank you, Father, because we were unable, we were unable to find our way back home. But because of your love for us, you sent your son, as it is written in somewhere, when, I think it's in Romans, he says, when we were yet sinners, Mashiach died for us. When we were your enemies, you sent your son to die for us. So, Father, today we are grateful that we have belonged to this Hodoshim Mishpacha, that we can sit here and share a little snippet of what we have gleaned from your word, why we serve you in the way we do, why we call your name in the way we call it, and we don't um, call it according to the regular people today. It's not that we are trying to be difficult or different, but we know, Father, that there is salvation in no other name, but in the name of Yahuwah, Yahusha. That's the word in Acts. That's the word that is written in Acts 2, 36 and 38. It's not Jesus the Messiah. It's Yahuwah, Yahusha. And, Father, we try to bring this message to people. That's why we speak the way we speak. We try to do the things our master did. We, we know beyond shadow of a doubt, at the time our master came to this world, he was born of Jewish parents. He was a Jew and he spoke Hebrew. So as we preach the gospel of the kingdom, to leave out that most pertinent fact would be a disservice to him and disservice to you, Father. We need to go back to the roots of our faith to know that we cannot call him by any other name and expect to be pleasing in your eyes because you said, if you don't honor my son, I don't know you. What the, the honoring of his son in First John, it talks about this. He says, for those that do not honor the son, they will, the father, and the Mashiach himself said, said it this way. He said, if you are not willing to confess me before men, I will not confess you before my father who is in heaven. So brothers and sisters and those of you who are listening today in this short little summonet that I am delivering to you is to tell you the good news that do not be despair, do not be discouraged. Our master Yahusha has come. He has already de defeated the devil and all of his works. No weapon form against you shall prosper. All it takes for you to do is to put your faith in the complete finished work of our Mashiach Yahusha, and you will be restored to the family of Yahuwah and, and come back into the kingdom from which you were estranged. 
because of sin in our lives. So I, my closing um, plan, my closing plea to you today is search your scriptures for in it, as, as Paul says in Romans 1, 16 to 17, this is what he said, and Paul was perhaps the greatest preacher of the gospel that ever lived since the Messiah himself. And this is what he said, Romans 1, 16 to 17. He said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, meaning in the gospel itself, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So this is my concluding remarks, brothers and sisters, that in the gospel itself, just to listen to the message in itself has the power to transform your life. If you would be obedient, as we learn from the book of Ephesians, that you have been saved through grace, and that not of itself, it's a gift of God. And the faith to believe that grace was also the gift of God. He so loved you that he gave his only begotten son, that if you would believe in him, you will not perish, but have eternal life. And, and the scripture further says that before the foundation of the world, he had predestined you to come to knowledge of his son and be saved and to be set apart unto himself. We call ourselves the Kodeshim Mishpukah. Those are Hebrew words meaning for a set apart family of God. And this is what we we want everybody to know that make Yahushua Jesus the Messiah their savior. This is what you are. You are a set apart family unto God because he has a family. And you are that part of that family when you accept his son, Jesus Christ, into your life. So brothers and sisters, as I'm ending this, I want to, I want to leave you with this one thought. There's salvation in no other name under heaven. There's only one name in which there is salvation, and that is the name of Yahuwah Yahusha. So be blessed and be a blessing. And I hope this little sermonette has been a blessing to you in Yahusha's name. I mean.